Hey, what's good, YouTube? This is the next installment in my How to Become an Award-Winning Author series. And in the previous video, I talked about your basic book pricing strategies. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about a topic that I believe is very controversial, and it's one that I have a very passionate and strong opinion on. And this video is all about the um, concept of the freemium or free 99 or the 99 cent book pricing strategy that many authors use. And so I'm in the beginning, I'm gonna to try to be as unbiased as possible and give you a couple of reasons as to why authors decide to use this strategy. But at the end, I'll be giving you my opinions as to why I don't think this strategy is beneficial for all authors. So without further ado, let's get into the meat of this video. As mentioned earlier, whenever authors decide to price their books at 99 cents, there's some reasons for why they decided to do so. And so what I found in my experience in my author journey are four main reasons as to why authors decide to price their books so low uh, at the 99 cent uh, level. So number one, the first main reason why they decide to price their book at 99 cents is an initial pre-sale strategy. And so when a new author puts out a new book, they price their book at the lowest possible number, which is 99 cents, so they can generate hype for their book. Whenever random people or really authors or readers that don't know about you want to buy your book and they see it priced so cheap, there's no hesitation. Like if the book was 9.99 versus 99 cents, everybody's gonna buy the 99 cent book. So it's an easy way to get traction when you're having your initial pre-sales or pre-book launch or whatever. That's why they do it. The second common use is to bait readers into uh, a series funnel or into a funnel of multiple books. So essentially you have authors who may have uh, a trilogy or they have four or five books in a series. And so to hook and lure people into that series, they'll either give the first book away free or they'll give it for 99 cents, which is basically free. And so the first reader, it's like a lead magnet. The, the reader will get this really cheap book. They may or may not get hooked on it. And then the next book may be priced at $1.99. Third book may be $2.99. And they eventually escalate the pricing uh, in the uh, series or in the funnel or the book funnel. And so the first book will always be the cheapest. And that's how they lure people into reading a new series. Um, the, the third common use is that to amass a ton of sales to get on bestseller lists. So a lot of people rig the system. I'll be have another video about why I don't like bestsellers lists. And a lot of people will put their book out for 99 cents and they'll get people to buy hundreds, if not thousands of copies of these books for 99 cents. <laughs> and so that one book sale for 99 cents counts the same as if you're selling it for $9.99. And so if you get a bunch of people buying really, really cheap books, you can say, oh, I've sold thousands of copies, but most people don't know is that you basically gave it away at 99 cents. So that's common use number three. And then number four is that a lot of people price their books at 99 cents because it makes your book ads more attractive. Uh, a lot of authors sell their books on Facebook using Facebook ads, Instagram, or BookBub, um, which is very common. And the cheaper your book, the more attractive your ad is. So when people will see, oh, this book is 99 cents. Oh, wow. I'll click on the ad and then get sent to Amazon to buy a really cheap book. So those are probably like the four most common uses and reasons for why um, authors price their book at 99 cents. And then the next clip, I'll talk about um, the most common niches where you're going to find these books priced so low. So when it comes to this 99 cent pricing strategy, you're gonna see a big divide between fiction and nonfiction authors. And why this is so true is that typically in the fiction niche is that you're gonna have a lot more sub niches such as romance, mystery, science fiction, or historical fiction or other different types of genres that you find books priced really, really low because a lot of times these uh, niches have authors that write in these big trilogies and series. So to help lure people into buying those books, they're gonna be pricing them at 99 cents. It's very, very common to find cheaper books in the fiction genre, fiction niche. That's, that's just a fact. 
And when it comes to nonfiction authors, like I said, for me, I'm in a self-help business book type of author. Those books are priced at a premium. These are the most expensive books uh, on average in the whole publishing world. So me pricing my book at 99 cents might attract a lot more initial readers, but it's going to stand out because most books in my genre aren't priced that low. So by knowing that different genres and different niches have different average costs per books, you really want to identify whether or not your genre, your niche, uh, if it's advantageous to price your book uh, at such a low price. And to really put out a, a word of caution, if you haven't already figured this out, but this 99 cent pricing strategy only works for eBooks. It only works for eBooks. Why? Because the cost to produce an eBook is nothing, is nothing. Like everybody knows that when you have a print book, um, your paperback or your hardback book is gonna have a certain author print cost. For me, my print cost for paperback is three dollars basically for my uh, hardback it's seven dollars if i price my book at 99 cents i will be losing money like i will be getting charged to sell my books like it doesn't make any sense so you're really only going to see this pricing strategy for ebooks it's uh audiobooks are pretty much never going to be free because like i said audible or other uh, platforms will automatically price your book based upon the length and like I said, if you have a print book, pricing your book at 99 cents, you will automatically lose money because your print book is always gonna cost more than 99 cents to, to print and come into uh, reality. So just understand that this strategy is only a digital uh, book strategy, nothing more, nothing less. And so my concluding thoughts on the 99 cent book pricing strategy are as follows. And number one, like this whole pricing strategy really depends on your long-term goals and also the niche that you're writing in. If you're planning on writing a big series of books and you want people to you know, get lured into your book funnel, it makes sense to price your book so low at 99 cents. If you're in a certain fiction genre like romance or mystery or historical fiction and books are commonly priced low, then it makes sense to do the 99 cent strategy. But for me as a nonfiction author, I really, really think this 99 cent book pricing strategy dev devalues nonfiction authors because our books are priced much higher than fiction books. And if you're selling your books for 99 cents, people with experience are gonna understand that you probably are just doing this as a gimmicky strategy to have more pre-sales, try, to try to hit a bestseller list, or even worse, that you might have not even written your book. You might have just ghostwritten it and you're just pricing it really cheaply just to say I'm a best-selling author or just to get some of these vanity metrics that really don't mean much. But I, I'm just really not a big fan of this 99 cent pricing strategy. And I really think that like, going after this strategy for nonfiction authors is a legitimate race to the bottom because 99 cents literally is the lowest price you can price your book i think on any platform other than free and like you're doing this but you're not making any money like you have to sell tens of thousands of a book of copies of your ebook at 99 cents to even get royalties that are, that are worthwhile like you're getting like 25 cents uh, per book if you're selling it so that cheap. So just understand that like you're really not gonna make much money if you're pricing your book at 99 cents. And then for me also, um, pricing your book really low can really help to set a very low expectation for your readers. If they see you pricing your books very cheaply and they begin to really like your books, if you go from 99 cents to say 5.99, they may be more apprehensive to buy the book. They may be expecting more of this cheap books for you know the perpetuity of your author career. I don't know, but I just think that you should be very, very cautious and more wise when you're thinking about pricing your ebook and just don't automatically go after the low hanging fruit of the 99 cent pricing strategy. So in sum, the 99 cent book pricing strategy has its pros and has its cons. Depending on the type of author you are, whether you're fiction or nonfiction, 
Um, it's this 99 cent book pricing strategy will help you or hurt you. Um, this is why you really need to do your due diligence. You really need to look at like your industry niche average. You need to understand like your whole pricing strategy, your long-term strategy as an author. But like I said, you have to think like a business person. You're not just somebody who's writing books to write books. Like, how am I going to make money as an author? And if the 99 cent pricing strategy helps you to achieve that long-term goal of being a successful independent or published author, then do it. But if not, like be very, very cautious when it comes to this 99 cent pricing strategy. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but for me as a nonfiction author in a very, very expensive niche, which is self-help and business, it's not advantageous for me to price my book so low. But that's just my story. Take this video um, at face value and see if this strategy can help you or hurt you. As with all my videos, I like to end with the question of the day. So my question today for you is this. Do you think pricing an ebook at 99 cents is a smart or stupid strategy for authors? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts, so please be sure to drop your comments below. Furthermore, if you want to become the entrepreneur of your life, you can begin this process today by subscribing to this channel. Also, please be sure to click the notification bell to be alerted for whenever new content drops. Until next time.